Hello, this is Tomlin from TomlinHarmonicaLessons.com and this week's uh, harmonica lesson is a live lesson. It's uh, a live Q&A session. Um, so the way this is going to work is you're going to ignore the color samples. We're, uh, we've, we've decided, so we've chosen this color. Um, so once, uh, once the, the Q&A is over, I'm going to start painting. Very exciting. But right now I'm excited about harmonica ring and uh, I'm going to see who we've got live. So if you have any questions, please just write them as a little uh, a little question in the uh, chat chat um, section. I'm going to try and get through everything, but um, it, uh, I, I might not be able to. So I, I've got an hour for this. Um, so I, I'm going to get through as many questions as I can. And if you're watching, say a little hello. Maybe say where you're watching from. Um, that's, uh, that's always fun. So I can see we have Cam. We have John. Hi. We have Mares. Hi, Mares. We have Peter. Hi, Peter. We have Ahmed. Hi, Ahmed. Uh, we have Nemeth and Sean, good to see you all. We've got uh, Jerry, we've got Bio Waste Man. Um, let, let, let me know what uh, what your name is, uh, Bio Waste Man, that'd be cool. Um, who else do we have watching live? Um, we have Sunil, good to see you. Uh, we've got Michael, we've got Dan, nice to see you all. Nice to see Mike, Anna, Marcelo, Blaine. Very, very cool. Ian. <laughs> nice. This is very, very cool. Right. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to get started with uh, some questions. I can see we've we got loads of people watching live. This is really, really cool. Um, so as I said before, I'm going to try and answer everything. But uh, please, please be patient with me. We we have a limited amount of time. So I'm going to see see. I'm going to try and do as many as I can. Um, okay, so let's have a little look. Um, <clears throat> so first question is a great question, question from uh, John. John has said, my question would be how to develop a decent vibrato on harmonica. So uh, this is actually something that I was um, chatting about with someone today. Uh, so there, there are kind of two, two ways that I would um, I would kind of approach this. So the, the one that um, is, is the kind of the classic blues vibrato is the, the kind of big meaty throat vibrato. Okay, so that that's all coming from the throat and, and the throat is kind of pulsing uh, rhythmically and that's changing the, the pitch of the note. So um, what you what you need to do to kind of get started with that is well, there, there are a couple of ways you can get started with it. So the way that I started doing it was the um, the, the Adam Gusso technique, um, which is the inward cough. Uh, so that's um, that's literally as it sounds, you're coughing on an in breath. So you're going, <laughs> and if you do that. <laughs> You can hopefully feel that the top of your throat is kind of clapping uh, like that. And that will give you something a little bit like this. Which is a little bit ugly sounding, but, but that's okay. That's kind of the first step. And, and as you relax, um, and this, this is over a, a, a decent period of time. I'm not talking over one practice session. I'm talking over many months, uh, maybe even years. As you relax, your, your throat will stop going bam, 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 bam. And it'll start, start doing this. It'll start wobbling. And you're getting this kind of nice kind of uh, rhythmic pulse. Um, so a, a lot of people, they, uh, they, they kind of get stuck on the and they, they sort of start choking on the harmonica and it's not a very pleasant sound, so they start practicing it. So what, what I generally recommend is that you practice a very small amount each day and you think of it as a long-term process. So maybe practicing two or three minutes at a time. Um, if you do any more than that, because you're basically coughing, you're gonna make yourself go hoarse and lose your voice. So please don't lose your voices. You got to be very careful with this, and you got to spend some time just just building up the the stamina. 
So that's one way of getting into that kind of throat vibrato. Uh, another way that I would um, uh, suggest approaching it, which works for some people, is playing that three draw, <coughs> bending it down, <coughs> and then saying ah, 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 while you're holding the bend. So the, the most important thing is this idea that vibrato is a bend. It's a rhythmic pulsing bend up and down in pitch. Um, so that ah, that ah, uh, ah uh, uh is, is a good way to uh, get started with that as well. So th those are uh, kind of the, the traditional throat, throat vibrato things. Um, today I was chatting uh, with, um, with uh, uh, Roly Platt, the, the awesome uh, harmonica player from Canada. And uh, he, he was giving me a lesson and we were talking about vibrato. And he does this thing that he calls embouchure vibrato, uh, which is this. So I'm, I'm still practicing it. It's not something I'm, I'm particularly good at yet, but he's kind of going like that with his lips and that, that gives it a, a really nice control. Vibrato, so that's another way that you could approach doing it. So I'm not gonna spend the whole, whole hour on, on vibrato, uh, but hopefully that gives you a, a bit of a, an idea of where to get started with, John. Um, okay, so uh, next question um, from Peter. Peter has said, uh, hi Tomlin, can you swap smoothly between square holes and recta rectangular holes with different spacing, or do you stick to one type? So I'm, I'm not massively fussy um, over what harmonica I'm playing. So in, in my harmonica case at the moment, I've got uh, Zydel 1847s, I've got a bunch of Suzuki Magis, I've got Hona Gold Melodies, Hona Crossovers, and they all have slightly different spacing. So I, I think traditionally the idea is that uh, Zydels have, have quite wide spacing in comparison to uh, maybe something like a Suzuki Manji, uh, so that the kind of the gap between the holes is a little bit wider and the holes themselves are a little bit wider. And it really doesn't bother me. Uh, <laughs> Um, I find that a lot of students struggle with the transition at the beginning, but um, you know, if, if you if you're jumping around between them uh, a lot, it uh, it does become second nature, and um, and I think that uh, you know it, it's a little bit like being really confident as a driver. You know, a really confident driver can jump between cars or vans or lorries or whatever, and it doesn't really affect them. Um, and and it's the same same with the harmonica. Uh, you know, if, if you're finding that you have to have an exact type of harmonica, uh, otherwise you can't play, then, then that's a problem. You want to try and develop flexibility and, and just be comfortable with, with whatever you have to hand. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't have preferences, um, but it's, it's, it's worthwhile being a little bit more flexible because you might, you might break a, a, a reed just before you have a gig and you have to run down to the local music shop and all they have are Hona Marine Bands or Special 20 or, or something that you've never even heard of and you've just got to make do. So um, yeah, that's my, my two cents on the subject. I hope that answers your question, Peter. Um, okay, so uh, next question. Uh, Hi, Tomlin, I'm a beginner slash intermediate and I know this may sound very simplistic, but I'm trying to get my head around the one, uh, four and five chords. How can I use those to jam with others? Okay, that's a really good question. So uh, the, the one, four, five, well, I, I'm assuming you mean one, four, five. You, um, you've actually written one, six, five, but I'm assuming you mean one, four, five, because that's what we talk about the most with uh, blues harmonica. So the one, four, five, they're the three chords that you have in a 12 bar blues. Um, you have the, the one chord for the first four bars with 12 bar blues. Then you have the four chord for two bars, then the one chord for two bars, then five chord, four chord, one chord, one chord. You might have a turnaround at the end, but the basic structure is that. And very, very simplistically, as a harmonica player starting out improvising, you can start to improvise by just targeting the root notes of those chords. So a root note is, is the, the fundamental note that the chord is named after. So our one chord, the root note is the two draw in second position. So I'm playing a C harmonica here. Okay. Then the four chord, the root note is a four blow. 
and the five chord, the root note is a four draw. Okay, so to, to play a very, very simple 12 bar blues without accompaniment, I could just play those root notes. So one, two, three, four. Up to the four chord. Back to the one. Five chord. Four. One. And so that, you know, it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but that's that's a 12 bar blues. That is the start of a 12 bar blues. And if you're playing with other people, you can use those notes as your target notes when they're playing a 12 bar blues. So say, for example, you have a guitarist playing, then you can uh, you can get them to play, play the 12 bar blues and you can jam along with them just by using those root notes. And it's, it's a very simple way to start. Um, you can start adding more things as you get comfortable with it, but I'll just, I'll very quickly show you how I would uh, start that. So I'm gonna put a backing track on at this end. Um, so I'll just do a, just like a 12 bar blues uh, in G. Four chord. One. Five chord. Four. One. Okay, so now, instead of just playing those root notes, uh, I'm going to play uh, a little bit more. I'm gonna add in the three draw half step bend, but I'm still gonna focus on those root notes. So I'll do something like this. Okay, so already with, with just the root notes, the one, four, five, and then adding in that three draw half step bend as a kind of pivot between them, you can start uh, playing the, the, the 12 bar blues and jamming with others. Um, so I, I hope that helps you get started a little bit, Bio Waste Man. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, you can go super far with this and, and you can make it a lot more complex, but that's where I would start right at the beginning. Um, okay, so um, let's see, uh, next question. Uh, so, um, right, uh, so, so DRD has said, I'm looking for a technique to figure out the key when I'm in a jam session. If it's a rhythm player, I can just look for the root chord by his chord shape, not so easy with a lead player. That's a great, great question. So um, we, we, there are already um, some, some quite good answers to this. Jerry has said, pitch pipe. Uh, or memorize C harmonica notes will at least get you your natural notes. So th those are good suggestions. Uh, what you could do just kind of very, very simply is um, just ha have all of your harmonicas ready. And um, as, as you play, as, as you listen along to, to the band, you can play the two draw on, on each of those harmonicas until you find the one that corresponds to the key that you're, you're playing in. So if I put uh, a backing track on, and um, and I'm going to to work through and show you how I'd work out what the key was. Uh, so let's put this one on. So I'm gonna start with my C harmonica on the two draw. That sounds horrible, so it's definitely not that. Let's try my A harmonica. Also horrible, so it's definitely not that. Let's, uh, let's try my B flat harmonica. Okay, so I think I think that might be it. That sounds pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the, the minor pentatonic scale over that. So that all sounds good. So I'm I'm assuming that they're playing uh, in second position on a B flat harmonica, which is the key of F. So so D R D. That's how I would approach uh, working out what uh, what the key is by ear. 
Uh, just kind of look for the, the two draw that fits. And then when you find one, try playing the scale. If the scale sounds good, then then you, you're probably in the right key. If the scale doesn't sound good, then you need to go back to, to playing the two draw on different harmonicas and look for an alternative. Um, so I hope that that helps you there. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, Istvan has said, Istvan is my first name. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, I'm a, uh, I now know. Right. Um, okay. I'm seeing that uh, I'm just kind of looking through for the next question. Um, okay. So Isfan has said, how many harmonicas do you have? Uh, which keys? Um, so I, I have a whole bunch of harmonicas, but I, I usually carry around 12 with me and and I usually have all 12 keys uh, at the moment. I don't have all 12 keys in here I have a couple of spare um, C harmonicas um, Just just because I, I was playing a, a gig the other night that was uh, Very intensively requiring C harmonicas and I didn't want them to die on me. So I, I had a couple of spares um, All right, let's have a little look uh, I'm 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 not sure if people are asking me questions or asking each other questions. I think they might be asking each other questions. Um, let's have a little look for um, the next question. I see. See, we've got we've got people from uh, from lots of uh, lots of different locations. We've got uh, uh, Frog Froggy from New York State. Uh, TF Guitar from Minneapolis, uh, Dan from Montreal, uh, BioWasteMans from Canada. This is very, very cool. Um, <laughs> Brooklyn, Houston, nice. Toronto, Los Angeles. Um, okay, so we have a question from Ian. Ian has said, what do you do when you buy a brand new harp? Do you tinker with it? Uh, that's a really, really good question. Um, so I usually try to avoid tinkering with harmonicas because uh, it drives me absolutely crazy. Um, I, I, I usually try and just make do. But um, if you know, I, I can, I've got a, a manji here that, that I got relatively recently and I've not tweaked it. And it's it's annoying me a little bit because of this. So that four over below, um, it doesn't quite pop out as comfortably as, as as I would like it to. So I might tweak that, and and the five over below as well. Okay, it's playing ball right now. It knows you're watching, um, but but if if I'm playing in the heat of the moment. It is not quite coming out as, as as cleanly as I want it to. So I might tighten up the gaps uh, on this, this harmonica a little bit, just so that overblow is a little bit easier to play. Uh, so I don't really need to force it to make it happen. Um, but I generally try to avoid tinkering with, with harmonicas. Um, that said, I, I was recently hanging out with uh, Bertram from Zydel. So uh, Bertram is the, the European rep for, for Zydel. And, and I said exactly what I've just said to you. He's like, no, 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 no. You should definitely, um, you should definitely tinker with any harmonica you get, even one of ours. Um, and so I, uh, he, he, he did one for me there and then he um, tinkered with a, a C harmonica, an 1847. Um, and he did, did a great job. Um, everything is a lot easier to, to hit in terms of the overblows. Okay, so that's seven overdraw. I don't usually play it, but it's a lot easier to play than, than I normally find it. Um, so, so Bertram showed me a bunch of things that, that he would do to a brand new harmonica. Um, so I might, I might re rethink it, but, uh, as a general rule of thumb, I prefer to spend my harmonica time either playing or practicing rather than, uh, with the covers off because, uh, it just, it drives me absolutely mad. I have very little patience. Um, but that, that's my, my fault. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. We got... Florida, by the way, man's called Alan. <laughs> nice to meet you, Alan. I will call you Alan from now on. Uh, okay, so let's have a look. Uh, Anna has asked, my question is, which has been the most 
beautiful song or songs you've ever played on harmonica, I want to play a song to a very important and loved person in my life. Okay, that's a great question. So um, this, I, I'm going to slightly twist this question a little bit because I think it's quite an interesting point. Um, when when we play harmonica, especially you know blues harmonica, we tend to do a lot of. not particularly pretty it's 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 fun but it's not particularly pretty playing um so it, it's quite nice to have some songs in your repertoire that uh are maybe a little bit a little bit prettier um so things that i like playing uh things like uh summertime <laughs> Uh, that kind of thing. I think that's a very, very pretty melody to play on the harmonica. Uh, or Georgia on my mind. Um, something like that. Th those are the, the the songs that I really enjoy from from that kind of prettiness. Uh, or even, you know, just a very simple classic melody like Amazing Grace. Uh, all I've got is Georgia in my mind. Uh, So that those are three three tunes you could think of about uh, think think of playing uh, for your loved one. Uh, very cool. All right, we've got Marcelo from Brazil. Very cool. Blaine in Tucson. Very nice. Bertrand from France. Uh, we've got Neres from Moscow. Very very cool. Okay, um, let's have a little look at uh, some more questions. Um, I just a, a whole bunch of uh, messages just popped up all at once. Uh, so I can see we have a lot of questions, let's I think. Um, okay. Uh, Dan has said, I guess I'm an intermediate beginner. I can't seem to get sound out of the 10 blow. Uh, I can blow bend on seven through nine, but no sound at all on the 10. Uh, Dan, if you're not getting any sound whatsoever on the 10, um, then that would make me think that you um, are probably, uh, you probably have some some stuff inside your harmonica. That's so probably quite a good idea to open it up and have a look and uh, maybe give it a bit of a clean. Uh, if, you, if you have a look through my channel, you'll see that I've got a couple of lessons on how to clean your harmonica. Um, if there's absolutely no sound, that, that, would, uh, that would probably be the reason. If um, you're getting um, you're getting a little bit of, of sound, then that usually is an indication that you're maybe trying to force the air through too much. So if you're getting something a little bit like, I'm gonna play something really ugly now. Something like that. I mean, it's because I'm playing too hard, so you need to be really gentle. And, and, and control it a little bit more. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, so Joel has asked a question. What do you do when you start out? Do you practice songs or techniques? Um, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't mean to be so flippant, uh, but you, you, you can and should definitely be doing both. I think the, the big issue with harmonica um, that, that I'm sure we all know is that it's quite difficult to, to get anything sounding good right at the beginning. Um, so you know, kind of getting just kind of clean uh, single notes is really, really tough. So there will be an element of, of practicing quite a lot of technique at the beginning just to get just that one, one, four blow there. Um, but 
I, I would definitely couple that with with trying to learn um, some simple melodies. So I mean, the the first melody that I learned was. Uh, so all blow notes, uh, it's really, really easy to play um, and it gets you practicing breathing, moving around the harmonica and, and, and consistently playing those clean single notes. So maintaining your, your mouth shape. Um, so you definitely want to do a, a mixture of, of learning songs, simple songs, beginner songs, as well as technique, because you can't, you can't learn the songs without having any technique. Um, and if you just learn technique, you're going to get really, really bored, uh, really quickly. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps you, Joel. Um, so Alan has said, have a great Christmas, Tomlin, and thanks for all the tips. Uh, my pleasure, Alan, and I hope you have a great Christmas as well. Um, so Frog Froggy actually said, Joel, find the single notes first. Totally right. Um, so uh, Enjoy Harmonica has said, hi, Tomlin. Many teachers tell me to hold the harp using my left hand, but why? I've always used my right hand. Am I making work for myself? Am I wrong? Okay, so the, the reason that, that, that people suggest holding it in your left hand um, is, is partly to do with, with hold, you know, which, which way up the harmonica is. So if you're holding the harmonica up uh, with your, um, with your uh, sorry, I'm gonna, trying to find a harmonica with numbers on it. Um, okay, so if you're hold, holding the harmonica uh, with the numbers on the top, then that means that if you're holding it in your left hand, the low notes are down at the bottom. And what that that means is that you can get a really nice, strong hand wire because you're holding it in your left hand. So you're wiring down at the low end. Whereas if you're holding it in the right hand side, you're not going to get very much of a hand wire at all. Uh, so that, that's the reason for holding it in the left hand. What some people do, if they hold it in their right hand, they usually hold it upside down. So that means that hole one is on the right hand side. And then you can kind of get get the hand wire like that. Um, so that that's the reason why it's better to hold it in your left hand. Um, that doesn't mean that you know if if you can't hold it in your left hand. You know, I've had students who who don't have the use uh, of their left hand, so yeah, that's not an issue. You can still hold it in your right hand. Um, but if if you can use both hands equally, uh, then I would definitely recommend holding it in your left hand with the numbers uh, facing up. Otherwise, hold it in your right hand with the numbers facing down. I uh, hope that helps. Um, okay. Let's see. Next question. Um, so Tom has said, Thomas, a little overview on articulation slash inflection as to express the notes. Um, so it's Tomlin, not Thomas. Uh, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to answer your question because you've said you're doing a wonderful job on your videos. So thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so uh, inflections. Inflections are, are kind of what makes the harmonica really, really fun, um, where um, an, a lot of instruments can just hit a note and it just sounds like a note. Um, what you can do on the harmonica is you can do, you can make it a lot more vocal. And what I'm doing there is, is I'm starting with a, a tiny uh, bend on the two draw and then releasing it straight up to the, the clean note. Uh, so I'm not doing a full bend, I'm not doing, I'm just doing a little bend. And, and to do that, I'm saying kia. Uh, it just makes it a little bit more vocal. And you'll see that, that I quite often add in the hand wire at the same time. So we get that. And, and it just, it, it almost makes the harmonica sound like it's speaking. Uh, and that's what's really cool about the instrument. You can kind of make it feel a little bit like a, like a human voice. Um, so that, that's, that's something that's really, really cool with the inflections. The articulations, so that's, that's similar, but instead of bending the notes, you're uh, adding some percussion to the notes. So, um, 
quite quite often I'll say two two. <laughs> Uh, and, and that'll make the, the notes really pop. And that just makes it feel a little bit more uh, aggressive and, and articulate. Um, so yeah, th those are kind of things that I would do on a regular basis, the, the articulation and the, the inflection. And they're things that are really, really great for the uh, for the, the harmonica that other instruments kind of struggle with. Um, okay, so uh, Megan said, I adore your teaching skills. Thank you, Megan. That's very, very kind. Much appreciated. Um, okay, so let's have a look through next questions. Um, so people are asking about the, the plant being watered recently. Plant, plants are, are, are watered on a regular basis. Um, it might just be that we're in winter, so uh, they're, they're in a quiet, quiet time at the moment. Um, all right. So next question, um, Neris has said, I recently started to learn harmonica and struggling sometimes with slow response from harmonica. Um, it takes me some time to adapt to the next hole. Uh, falling behind the rhythm is it something is it common uh, do you have any tips um, so if, if you're finding that your harmonica is having is, is kind of slow to respond that usually means that you're you're pulling too hard you're you're grabbing the air so you're going rather than breathing naturally so if you're getting something like this on the two draw and it's, it's taking a lot of effort to get started that means that you're sucking rather than breathing naturally so try breathing a little bit lighter and not pulling so hard, and uh, that'll make it a lot, uh, a lot easier uh, to, to to move between notes. Um, and the the key for for speed uh, with a harmonica is is not playing hard; it's playing really, really gently, um, and, and and having a light airflow because it's much easier to switch direction if you're just breathing in a little bit rather than going. <laughs> but if you're just going. That kind of thing. If you can practice that, quickly changing direction. So it's not a very musical exercise. It's just to get comfortable with that that very light uh, breath. It means that you can then kind of so. If I was trying to do all that kind of stuff really hard, I, I wouldn't be able to. We have that, that really slows me down. So I got to have that that light touch to get the speed. Um, and a final thought, if you're finding that the harmonica is really, really slow to respond, then that you, you might be playing a harmonica that's too low. So if, you, if you're playing a G harmonica, they, they are slow to respond. They, they use more air. They're not, they're not as quick as maybe a D harmonica. So if you've got something like... That, that for me, that's slow to respond as well. But if I, if I pick up my... Uh, my D harmonica. Then it's it's a lot easier to play fast with that kind of thing. Uh, so I hope that that helps. Um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry uh, about it. You have got to get used to having the, the harmonica in your mouth and, and playing naturally and breathing naturally, and that'll take a bit of time. And then you'll find that you can catch up with the rhythm uh, as as you go along. Uh, okay, so let's see um, some more questions. Uh, okay, so um, Barry said, "Where do you get the backing tracks?" Um, so I get. Uh, um, I, I get, well, I, I usually either I have my friend Harry record backing tracks, he's a guitarist, or I, uh, I record them myself if I have time. Um, so yeah, backing tracks come from me or from Harry. Uh, uh, yeah. So Frederick has said, have you mentioned the vibrato? Yes, I did. I did chat about vibrato uh, right at the beginning. That was the, the first question I answered. So uh, at the end of the session, you'll be able to 
go back over the video and, and watch uh, the beginning again to, to see my thoughts about Verato. Uh, all right, let's see, we've got people watching. We've got Ahmet in Turkey. We've got Jarko in Sweden. Uh, Alexandre in Brazil, very cool. Uh, this is very exciting. Sankar has said, beautiful channel. Thank you, Sankar, much appreciated. Um, okay. So uh, Nikki has said, do you happen to have a tab for blues chords? Uh, so yes, I do. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, I, I, have, I have a bunch of, bunch of lessons around this. Um, so I'll just, I'll send it through to you. Uh, Tomlin, I'll put it as a comment under here, 12 bar blues. Um, Bear with me one moment. Okay, so we've got what is a 12 bar blues and how to count through it. Uh, so that, that will give you the notes of the 12 bar blues. So I'll just, I've pasted this into the chat box so you can watch that uh, later on. Uh, okay, so let's see, next question. Um, so Richard has said, hi, Tomlin, any tips for third position playing? Yeah, so um, the, the it's the best way to kind of not overcomplicate third position playing um, is to think of it a little bit like second position playing, uh, but starting on the four hole. So if if you kind of take the the shape of your blue scale in second position, okay. Um, so you you take that shape and you move it up two holes and start on the four draw. And up until the point where you would have been playing the five draw in second position, it's exactly the same. And then at that point, you're playing the notes the other way around. So you'll be playing seven blow, eight draw. But what you can do is you can, for now, because you're just getting started with third position, just ignore those last two notes of the scale and play uh, the, first, the first four. First five, I'm gonna to learn to count one of these days. Uh, so learn to play those first five notes. And you can take any lick that you play in second position between holes two and four, and you can replicate it just by, by moving it up two holes. So if you take, for example, uh, John Giddick's uh, Good Morning Lick. That, that one. So that's two draw, three draw half step bend, or three draw, just clean three draw. Let's just do that, two, three, four blow, four draw. So if you shift that up two notes, and you get exactly the same thing, but with a nice minor third, that's the five draw. Um, and you can just play around with, with anything that you would do between holes two and four, just shift it up two notes. So if, for example, I do up to the four hole, I'm now playing in third position. So that's kind of the, the, the really easy way to, to jump into third position. Now, you can, you can spend lots and lots of time doing more complicated things on third position, in third position, and, and there's lots of value to that. There are loads of very cool things you can do. One of my favorite things is, is all those tasty bent notes that you have down in the lower octave. So when you get the kind of <laughs> that kind of thing. I love. Uh, so that takes a little bit more work, but just kind of the, the quick and dirty uh, intro to third position, just shift your second position licks up uh, two holes, uh, between, you know, do everything from between two, two and four, shift it up two holes, and that'll get you started. Um, so I hope that helps you, Richard. It is, it is a very quick and dirty way of playing third position, but it will get you started. Um, Okay, so let's see. Um, Jarko has said, I only sound good on a special 20. Um, so I, I, I don't think that's a problem. Play a special 20. Um, I think that that's the crucial thing. Um, everyone has harmonicas that they prefer. Um, I, I tend to, to, to flip between a bunch of different uh, styles and, and brands. Um, as I said before, I've got Zydel, Suzuki, Hona in my harmonica case. Um, I'm really enjoying the 1847s at the moment, uh, but I, I'm also kind of falling in love with the, the Manji again. 
um, which I've not played for a really long time, but I'm really enjoying it. So yeah, do, do what feels good to you, do what makes you want to practice. So if, if the special 20 makes you sound good and that makes you practice more, great, just do that, that's brilliant. Um, so David has said, any tips on improving tone while tongue blocking? Uh, I'm a lip purser getting into tongue blocking uh, and I can't get a stronger tone. So this is a, an interesting question. So what, what I tend to find is that if you're not getting a very strong tone tongue blocking, it usually means that you're blocking too much. So if, for example, you're trying to play the four blow, um, you would be blocking holes two and three with the uh, over on the left-hand side of your mouth, and you just have the hole four that you're playing out of the right-hand side of your mouth like this. But what, what people sometimes do is they tighten up a little bit too much on the right-hand side, and they get quite a thin tone because of that. So I would just try and push the harmonica a little bit deeper in. Um, and you see how deep I am. Sorry, trying to work out the best way for you to see that. Um, so yeah, try try going a little bit deeper and, and don't pull too hard. It always comes back to, to not sucking too hard because if you're kind of really pulling in, then that pulls your pulls your lips in and, and you start tightening up that, that mouth shape and, and you don't have a nice big open um, open hole over that four draw and you're not gonna get a nice four draw. Um, so that, that those are some ideas for getting the tongue blocking to sound a little bit richer. Uh, okay, uh, right, so I've got Gabriel watching from Warsaw. Hi, Gabriel. You have Dennis in Brazil. Good to see you, Dennis. Frederick in New York. Very cool. Bill in Alberta. Nice to meet you. Um, right. Let's see. <laughs> Andres has said, did we wake up your wife? A light has been turned on. No, no. She just turned the light on for me, so I had more light. She's very thoughtful like that. Um, okay. So Jerry has said, I love exploring old funk in third position. I couldn't agree more. I think funk works really well in third position. That's a, that's a great, great shout. Um, right, let me see. I just, I noticed a question and it disappeared. Um, um, Sorry, I know that there are a lot more questions than the ones that uh, that I'm answering. I, I'm trying to to answer as many um, as many as I can. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. <laughs> Michael has asked a great question, actually, which is: uh, Will taking live lessons take me to the next level faster than watching videos? Um, I, I think that's a really, really good question because. In my opinion, and, and you can definitely quote me on this, um, everything you need to get good on the instrument um, is available for free on the internet. That's, that's completely true. Uh, you know, I believe that. There are so many good lessons out there. You've got Adam Gusso, Ronnie Shellis, Jason Ritchie, Liam Ward, uh, Will Wilde. You know, so many more. David Barrett, anyone I'm forgetting, that doesn't mean that they're any less important. So many great lessons. What you don't have from watching videos is, is any kind of accountability or structure. Um, so if you, if you kind of jump around, every, you know, from, from this video to this video and you think, oh, that looks good and oh, that looks good, then you're gonna be consuming a lot of, a lot of material but you're not gonna get really good because you've just sat down and learned one thing. You're, you're gonna start a bunch of things and not own any of them. So the thing that, that going to um, a, a, a teacher in person, what that's gonna, gonna make you do is they're going to uh, kind of sit you down and say, no, you can't jump around all these things got to focus on this one thing and you've got to, got to make it sound really good and then we can move on to the next thing. So a teacher can kind of create that discipline. 
Another thing that a teacher will do that watching videos won't do is um, really make you feel, <clears throat> excuse me, accountable and, and feeling like you have to practice because you've, you've put some skin in the game. You've, you've given the teacher some money and that's going to make you want to practice. So, you know, I, I've started taking lessons with uh, Rolly Platt um, and, and it's, it's been great for me. It's, it's made me feel a lot more accountable. Uh, I need to um, do my practice because because otherwise I feel bad because I've spent money on, on doing lessons. And that that's great. That, that was the value. Now, I've, I've learned 95% <clears throat> of what I know on harmonica by watching videos on YouTube and by listening to records and that kind of thing. But I'm, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to keep that, that, that up, that, that discipline. And, and so sitting down and having a teacher saying, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to work on this. It's huge. Um, so yeah, I, I think, uh, you know yourself better if you're super disciplined, Michael, and and you know you work through the videos systematically, then you'll get everything you need uh, from videos, definitely. But if you're not, if you're if you're a human being like me, then you might need a little bit of help. Um, okay. So Armin has said, "Have you written a harmonica book?" I've not yet. Um, I've well, I've written quite a lot of material. Um, I think we, we're, we're kind of sitting at uh, maybe kind of 500 odd pages of material on the Harmonica School website, but I would really like to write a specific book um, about, um, well, I, I want to write a beginner's book actually, because um, I'm, I, I can't find a use, a good beginner's book that really, really tackles kind of simple blues playing that's fun right from the beginning. I think there's a lot of lot of beginner material that jumps straight in with traditional melodies that uh, you know are, are useful for learning single notes, but maybe aren't why people got excited about um, about playing blues harmonica in the first place. So that is something I'm going to do, I promise, uh, but uh, not not straight away. Um, focusing on the harmonica school at the moment. Um, okay, so. Um, God, and people have said so many nice things. I, I really appreciate this. Con has said, thanks for your lessons, Tomlin. Keep up the good work and happy Christmas. Happy Christmas to you as well. Thank you so much. Um, Emmy said, thanks for all your lessons. I learned a lot from you in just one month. Well, that's really, really nice. Thank you so much. Um, very, very cool. Uh, let's see. Um, Okay, so Istvan said, uh, congratulations on your video, uh, your Shake Your Hips video on stage. What type of mic did you use there? Was that overdriven tone? Okay, so I used a uh, Blows Me Away Bulatini. Um, that's pretty much the only mic I use these days. Um, and I wasn't overdriving, like I didn't have any pedals. I was just going into a clean amp, a clean valve amplifier, a DV Mark Galileo 15 and all the overdrive was coming from my hands. So having a really good, strong seal around the harmonica um, really, really use it, really helps to, to get that, that sound. Um, okay, so next question from Strategic Maintenance Planning Limited. Um, he's, they've said, um, he or she has said, Tomlin, I find the one draw and two draw often bend when I don't want them to. Any tips or reasons as to why? So I, I hear this all the time with my students uh, when they come in and play. And um, usually, well, it, it always means that you're you're pulling rather than breathing naturally. So you get the kind of... Uh, and it's because you're going... And, and the way to, to fix that is by relaxing your tongue Okay, letting the tongue sit in the base of your mouth and just practice breathing naturally with that, that mouth shape. So try doing this. Make the mouth shape as if you were playing a two draw and, and breathe in. You can hear that, there's absolutely no sound. So that means that, that the airflow is not being channeled by my tongue, so I'm not sucking, I'm not going. If you hear the airflow, you'll see that my lips are starting to kind of pulling a pull in a little bit. And that, that means I'm sucking because my tongue is involved. It's going, it's channeling the air. So I want to let that tongue relax and go. Breathe from the back of your throat. And if, if your tongue's completely out of the way, the back of your throat will start to feel cold. 
um, and, uh, and and you'll know that you've got a completely unobstructed airflow. And you can grab the t that harmonica again and play a nice clean two draw. Now, what you're probably thinking now is, is, okay, well that's fine if I'm just sitting and playing one note, but what about in the heat of the moment when I'm, and, you know, I'm playing something. And, and the truth is that you're gonna have to spend quite a lot of time just practicing the note in isolation. And then you're gonna have to slowly practice playing simple licks with that note. So maybe doing, And then slightly more complicated. And just gradually build up the complication and it'll start to become your habit. Um, and I know it's super frustrating. It, it really is. And, and, and I feel that because I, I, I've experienced this. I've learned harmonica just like you. I have been at, at the first step and I've, I've moved through it. And it does take time to get that, that consistently relaxed embouchure. Uh, and 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 you know not sucking hard, but you know it's it's the one thing I say more than anything else, and it is the most important thing. And it's really hard to do when someone tells you to. But it's just remembering to relax. All of that that good, nice, rich sound comes from being relaxed. If there's any tension whatsoever, if you're kind of doing this, and it sounds so thin. But if you let everything open up. Just be loose. You get those nice, big, rich sounds. Uh, so I hope that helps. Um, okay, so Jarko has said, left or right with tongue blocking? Great question. So uh, usually, if you are um, tongue blocking holes two and up, your tongue is over on the left-hand side of your mouth and you're playing out of the right-hand side of your mouth. If you're playing the one hole, you'll switch so that you're then blocking the right-hand side of your mouth. So if I'm doing something like, so there I'm playing one draw, four draw, and I'm tongue blocking, so I'm playing, I'm doing this. If anyone's tuning in right now, I'm sure that that's very confusing and I'm not gonna explain why I'm doing it. For everyone else who's been watching for a while, hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of which side to tongue block with. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, uh, uh, uh. So Jarko said, I need a private lesson on tongue blocking. Okay, well, the person that I would recommend for that is Liam Ward uh, from learntheharmonica.com. He is the man, he's a total, uh, a total tongue blocking wizard. He's shown me so much useful stuff, so, so definitely check it out. Check him out, Liam Ward, learntheharmonica.com. Um, okay, so Khan has said, question, how do you bend tongue blocking? I'm starting to experiment with tongue blocking, but wondering how to bend notes. How about the lower holes? Do you tongue block hole three, for example? Okay, so uh, <laughs> bending is exactly the same as bending with lip pursing, but it's harder, right? Because if you think about, if, if you're playing a four draw bend, you know, you're pulling your tongue back, easy. Well, not necessarily easy, but easier. When you're tongue blocking, your tongue is then gonna be stuck on the, the harmonica. So when you're bending, your tongue's going, how do, how do I bend up? So unfortunately, it's going to be like learning to bend again. You're still going EU, but you're going EU with your tongue forced forward. Um, it's not easy, uh, and, and you'll probably get something a little bit more like kind of a weedy sound like that, but just persevere. You'll build up the strength. You'll be able to get, get the independence of movement and eventually, okay? And, and it's gonna be harder on the lower notes, but not impossible. Uh, but as a little aside, uh, generally, I don't tongue block the lower notes. I do sometimes, but I generally don't. I generally lip purse one, two, three, and then tongue block four and up. But not always, you know, I, I use tongue blocking as an effect uh, and when I want to play certain things. So I hope that, that helps you. Uh, all right. Let's see. 
uh, uh, any what the next questions are. So I'm, I'm conscious we have five minutes left. So I'm, I'm going to pick a couple of uh, questions and uh, and try not to. Well, I know I've left some people out. I apologize for that. Um, okay, so there's a great question here, actually, uh, from Lance Trans, uh, saying, my question from a couple of months ago, are there out-of-the-box hops that can't be overblown? Um, I, <laughs> yes, yes, is, is, is the quick answer. Um, I think a really, really good overblow player. So in, in my brain, I'm just visualizing Jason Ritchie. I feel like he could probably overblow anything. Um, but there are definitely out of the box harmonicas that it doesn't come easily on. Um, the the one the, the harmonica consistently that people have trouble with overblowing is the Lee Oscar out of the box. Um, just something about the design makes it really, really difficult. Um, and you know, it's some harmonicas are just are just easier. Um, just there's variation from from harmonica to harmonica of the same brand and same model. Um, so you know, the, the, at the moment I've got uh, a bunch of, of Suzuki Manjis um, that, that that were sent to me, and and some of them overblow really well, and some of them don't. Um, and it, it's it's just weird. Um, so you know, if I want them to overblow, I'll need to tweak them. Um, but you should hopefully be able to get out of any high quality harmonica, uh, you should be able to get the start of an overblow and then you'll be able to tell whether you need to uh, do any tweaks and, and what the tweak is. Um, but, uh, but that will come with, with, with practice. The harmonicas that I've, I've had the best luck with, with overblowing out of the box with students at the Hona crossover actually. So that, that one has, has proven really good for overblowing. Um, okay, so let's see, I'll do one more question. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, so uh, Clark has said, you should do this once a week. I like question answers and learning from others. So I, uh, I'm, not, I'm not gonna pitch my school, but I do do this uh, once a week over in my online harmonica school, uh, and it is a lot of fun. Um, okay, one more question. Um, Benjamin has said, random question, how often do you need to clean the harmonica? So depending A, on how much you play, and B, how, I'm not gonna say how disgusting you are, but just on, on your biochemistry. So me personally, I'm a very disgusting human being. Um, so you know, I find that my harmonicas need cleaning pretty regularly and I, I probably clean them, I probably should clean them every month. Uh, I probably do it realistically every two, maybe even three months. But if I've, if I've left it that long, then it's really, really gross. Most of my students clean their harmonicas once every six months uh, and that's usually enough. The thing to do is, is is look at your harmonica, and if there's stuff kind of growing out of it, then um, then you know it's 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 definitely time to clean. If you find that your reeds are sticking, it's definitely time to to clean. So you'll you'll know that your harmonica is starting to feel a little bit less responsive. Then it is time to clean. Um, okay, I think I think that's probably uh, quite a uh, quite a good point to to call it a day. Um, this has been so much fun for me, and and I, I'm so appreciative of everyone who's watching live. We've got uh, uh, nearly 150 people watching live, which is fabulous. Uh, so very very cool. Thank you so much for spending so much time with me. This is brilliant. I, I feel uh, very honoured. And uh, I want to want to thank you for for all the wonderful things that you've uh, made happen this this year in Harmonica Land. We we hit 70,000 subscribers. Uh, Harmonica School is is all up and running. Um, so so yeah, thank you so much. I've I've really enjoyed 2018 for for Harmonica, and I'm looking forward to to next year. Uh, I've got some big plans, some new resources coming up. So. Uh, watch this space, that'll be really exciting. And uh, really looking forward to next year's Edinburgh Harmonica Workshop, uh, which will be taking place in July with uh, Ronnie Shellist and Lee Sankey and Liam Ward and myself. So yeah, so Merry Christmas to everyone. And uh, if you don't celebrate Christmas, then uh, I hope you have a lovely festive period. Uh, I will be back in January uh, with some more harmonica goodness for you. 
And uh, yeah, thank you so much for all your kind words. And uh, I will see you next year. Happy harping.